At 30, I find myself at a crossroads of desire and duty. I'm Qin Zhao, and for eight years, I've been married to Su Chung, a man whose dependability once drew me to him like a moth to a flame. We have a son together, a life together, but lately, I've been wondering if together means what I thought it would. We met while working at the same factory, two young souls finding each other in the mundane rhythms of daily labor. His steadfast nature felt like an anchor in my turbulent youth. Our love bloomed quickly, a passionate flower that bore fruit after just two years of dating. We married, stepping into what I thought would be our happily ever after. But life has a way of dulling even the brightest dreams. Our marriage is comfortable, stable, filled with the kind of security that should make a woman content. Yet beneath the surface of our ordinary days, a hunger grows inside me. Perhaps it's because I'm still young, or maybe it's simply the nature of desire, but I find myself craving more than the lukewarm affection my husband offers. Su Cheng's reliability, once his most attractive quality, now feels like a prison of predictability. He forgets birthdays and anniversaries, dismissing them as just another day. On nights when I dress in my finest silk nightgown, hoping to kindle some passion, he responds with perfunctory lovemaking that lasts mere minutes, leaving the fire inside me unquenched and smoldering. I'm not highly educated, but I know beauty. I understand the power of appearance, the confidence that comes from feeling desirable. My husband sees my desire for nice clothes and makeup as frivolous spending, suggesting I redirect my earnings to household expenses. But for me, these aren't luxuries. They're essential expressions of self, small rebellions against the beige backdrop of my daily life. What he doesn't understand is that when I stand before the mirror, applying lipstick or trying on a new dress, I'm not just beautifying myself, I'm reaching for the woman I dream of being. I've even contemplated plastic surgery, fantasizing about transforming into someone as captivating as the stars on television. Though fear has held me back from such drastic measures, I found other ways to chase beauty. The gym became my sanctuary, a place where I could sculpt not just my body, but my confidence. Sometimes, in quiet moments when our son is asleep and Su Ching is lost in his phone, I wonder if this is all there is. Our in-laws are kind, our life is stable, yet something essential feels missing. The passion that once drew us together has been replaced by routine, our conversations reduced to discussions of groceries and bills. I'm not ungrateful for what we have. Many would envy our peaceful life, our healthy child, our lack of serious conflicts. But gratitude doesn't fill the void that grows wider with each passionless kiss, each forgotten anniversary, each night I lie awake wondering if this gentle emptiness is all I can expect from love. My hunger for beauty, for passion, for something more than mere contentment isn't about vanity, it's about vitality. In my pursuit of physical perfection, what I'm really chasing is the feeling of being truly alive, truly desired, truly seen. As I write this, I realize that perhaps what I'm seeking isn't just external beauty or romance, but a way to feel extraordinary in an ordinary life. My husband sees me as his wife, the mother of his child, a reliable partner in this domestic dance we perform daily. But I want to be seen as a woman still capable of inspiring desire, of being more than a role in someone else's story. I don't know where this hunger will lead me. For now, I channel it into my workouts, my small beauty rituals, the private moments when I allow myself to dream of more. But I can feel it growing, this yearning for something that makes my pulse quicken and my spirit soar. They say hunger is the best sauce. But what happens when what you're hungry for can't be found on any menu life seems willing to offer you? I can feel my marriage slipping away like sand through my fingers. What was once two hearts beating as one has become two strangers sharing a home? This isn't just a temporary rough patch or a simple misunderstanding. It's the slow erosion of love, worn away day by day until all that's left is hollow routine. While I may not be the perfect wife, I've always prided myself on being a devoted mother and a thoughtful daughter-in-law. I put my heart into caring for my family, it's who I am. But as the emotional distance between my husband and me grew, so did my yearning for connection, for someone to truly see me. That's when the gym became my sanctuary and where I met Tom. Every morning, we'd cross paths, working on becoming better versions of ourselves. As the days went by, an undeniable connection began to form. When my membership was about to expire and money was tight, Tom surprised me by renewing it himself. 
Such a simple gesture, yet it made me feel cared for in a way I hadn't in years. Our relationship deepened. He'd help me with my form, his body pressed against mine as he guided my movements. Sometimes, I could feel his excitement pressed against me, sending shivers down my spine. The gym became the highlight of my day, not just for the exercise, but for those precious moments when I felt truly alive, desired, appreciated. It wasn't about filling a void, it was about rediscovering the warmth of genuine connection. When my best friend and I decided to open a clothing boutique together, I was over the moon. Finally, a chance to pursue my passion. But reality hit hard when funding became an issue. I turned to my husband, hoping for support, only to be met with cruel words and outright rejection. It felt like having a bucket of ice water dumped over my dreams. Desperate, I reached out to family and friends, but everyone was fighting their own battles. The weight of it all was suffocating. Some nights, I'd find myself turning to alcohol just to numb the pain, standing at the edge of an emotional cliff. That's when Tom became more than just a gym buddy. He noticed my distress, invited me out to clear my head. Maybe it was trust, maybe desperation, but I found myself opening up to him completely. With Tom, I could be vulnerable, could show the cracks in my armor. What happened next felt like a scene from a movie. Without hesitation, Tom offered to invest in my boutique. His casual generosity left me speechless, his faith in me bringing tears to my eyes. In that moment, I realized, sometimes love finds you when you least expect it, but need it most. Money problems aren't real problems, Tom said with a casual shrug. I'll give you 50,000 for the boutique. Will that be enough? I could hardly believe my ears. Just like that? You're not worried I'll take the money and run. His response caught me off guard, warming me from the inside out. I trust you. You won't run. Don't worry about the money. Just focus on making your dream happen. This unexpected kindness, this pure trust, felt like the first warm breeze of spring after a long winter. The financial stress had been weighing me down for so long, and Tom's generous help only made my growing feelings for him bloom even stronger. With Tom's support, my best friend and I threw ourselves into the boutique. Our hard work paid off, customers kept coming back, and we even expanded into live stream sales, opening up a whole new world of possibilities. This success wasn't just because of Tom's kindness, it was the result of our relentless effort and determination. To celebrate and show my gratitude, I invited Tom to dinner. I spent hours choosing the perfect restaurant, wanting everything to be just right. The atmosphere was intimate, comfortable. Tom accepted the money I tried to repay him with a humble smile, but what happened next took my breath away. He pulled out an envelope with an additional 20,000. My mind went blank as he spoke words I'd been both longing for and dreading. Ever since we met at the gym, I've been falling for you. I want to be with you. Take this money, there's more where that came from. His confession made my heart sore, even as it confirmed what I'd known deep down, my feelings for him were far from unclear. Though we hadn't crossed the final physical boundary in all our time together, my heart raced at the thought. That night, I went to his place. He'd prepared a candlelit dinner, but I could see the urgency in his eyes, matching my own desire. We'd both been waiting for this moment for so long. What followed was a symphony of passion, on the couch, the dining table, and finally in his bedroom. We left traces of our love everywhere, like marking our territory in the secret world we'd created together. It was terrifying and thrilling, a dance of desire we'd been rehearsing since that first meeting at the gym. In the gray area between right and wrong, we wrote our own rules. These were dangerous days, heart-pounding moments of bliss that I knew I shouldn't want to remember, but couldn't bear to forget. After a year of stolen moments and secret rendezvous, Tom ended things abruptly. Work, he said. I have to relocate. I didn't try to stop him or beg him to stay. Deep down, I knew this year had been borrowed time, a fantasy that could never last. A clean break was the kindest ending we could hope for. I didn't cry. I didn't cause a scene. On the surface, I was calm, collected. But beneath that facade, my heart was shattering into a million pieces. For six months, I lived in a world devoid of Tom. No messages, no chance encounters at the gym. He vanished from my life as suddenly as he'd entered it. Each day was an exercise in survival, letting the raw ache in my chest slowly scab over. It wasn't just the physical intimacy I missed, it was the emotional connection, 
the feeling of being truly seen and understood. I buried our story deep inside, a secret too dangerous to share, especially with family. The guilt and fear of discovery became my constant companions. Then came the day my husband looked at me differently, his eyes clouded with suspicion. Someone saw you with a man in town. Is that true? My denial was immediate, instinctive. They must have been mistaken. I've been too busy with the boutique. His voice turned cold, threatening. Don't lie to me. Come clean now, or if I find out on my own, you'll be the one who suffers. Cornered, I went on the offensive. Go ahead, investigate. I've got nothing to hide. Meanwhile, who knows what you've been up to all these years, always away for work. My words hit their mark. His face darkened, but he simply said, I have nothing to hide either. He searched, of course. Found nothing concrete, but enough smoke to suspect the fire. Now he stays home instead of traveling for work, a silent guardian of our fractured marriage. We've settled into a new normal, cold, distant, each of us harboring our own resentments and suspicions. In front of our child, our parents, we're the picture of domestic harmony. But behind closed doors, we're strangers bound by obligation and shared history. He thinks I'm tainted. I think the same of him. It's a splinter we can never quite remove, festering beneath the surface of our polite interactions. Sometimes, in the quiet hours of the night, I wonder, if I'd never met Tom, would I be living in blissful ignorance? Would my marriage still feel whole, untarnished by secrets and lies? But there's no going back, no way to unring this bell. They say time heals all wounds, but some cuts leave scars that never truly fade. In the end, the greatest casualty wasn't just my marriage. It was the person I thought I was, the life I thought I'd have. Now all that's left is to live with the choices I've made in this purgatory of my own creation.